right uh, so in our subject selected topics in uh, decision modeling uh, today we are going to have lecture number 17 that is on branch and bound technique so in our previous lecture uh, we have just started the topic and uh, today we shall see the uh, particular technique in more detail and uh, solve some uh, specific problems maybe uh, somewhat simpler problems in the beginning uh, which will be our precursor to really solve uh, a classical problem that is the traveling salesman problem is it all right and uh, you know uh, traveling salesman problem uh, branch and bound is a predominantly important method uh, for solving the traveling salesman problem uh, really to get an exact solution having said that uh, let us revisit the branch and bound technique once again and uh, then see some examples then how exactly uh, they are really taken up. So, branch and bound technique that is our lecture 17 today. So, as we have uh, said the essentially what happens in a branch and bound technique uh, we have a solution space that is shown here in this blue color. Now, uh, the solution space has a solution. Uh, now, the question is that we really want to solve the final optimal solution for the total problem. Is it all right? But then uh, we need a bound, a quick value we need. There should be a method available to us uh, by which we are able to get a bound uh, to this problem. So, if it is a maximization problem, we need a bound which could be the maximum possible value is it not a kind of upper bound and uh, for a minimization problem we need uh, something which is a lower bound that means the lowest possible value and it should be possible to get it quickly. Obviously, such a solution will not be feasible. If it is also a feasible solution like uh, it happens in the uh, assignment problem solution which we shall see later uh, becomes a, a quick solution to the TS problem if it is feasible. Uh, we shall see that later. But uh, most often you find the quick solution which you get by some method uh, intuitive method which gives us the bound is not optimal uh, in a sense that it is not feasible. So, what should we do then? Then we should be able to branch uh, this particular solution space. Uh, an example is here, we have branched it into two, uh, you know, comp two parts. It need not be two, it could be three or more also. So, supposing we, we divide these into two, these two sub problems that is SS1 and SS2, they must be mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. That means, there should not be any overlap and together they should have the complete problem. Is it all right? Uh, what we do then? Then we try to see again uh, by the same intuitive method a quick bound for SS1 and SS2. Now, uh, if that particular value uh, also becomes feasible, obviously you know we then compare out of the different bounds which we have got for uh, different such subsystems which one is the best possible value. Incidentally the feasible value that we got if it is also the best possible value uh, obviously we have got the answer is it all right. So, let us see how we go about it. So, as I said that there are three basic steps the branching, bounding and fathoming. The branching choose one of the variables whose value will be fixed uh, to create n new sub problems. So, usually that is what is done, uh, we take a variable value to get the sub problems. Then the bounding, as I said, uh, there should be quick way to find uh, the bound that means the best possible value whether feasible or not. Uh, like example is the LP relaxation of an integer linear programming is a valid bound for integer linear programming problem. Uh, 
Uh, it can also be found in other ways like I said the assignment solution provides a bound for the traveling salesman problem. The fathoming is another thing that you see where do I end? Suppose I divide a particular problem uh, into sub problems then to uh, which level do I keep dividing? Is, it not? is there something that we just cannot divide the sub problem anymore? Is it all right? That is where we say that this sub problem is fathomed means the end has been found. It there is no point uh, really dividing the sub problem into further sub sub problems right. So, that is fathoming and in, in case of the LP relaxation the optimal solution suppose we find an integral solution as I said that feasibility is found uh, then that sub problem is fathomed. Or uh, if we get to a bound which is worse than the best solution found so far, is it not? See, the idea is if you divide the sub problem further and further, obviously, we are not going to get any better bounds. We, we shall only get worse bounds than that we have at present. So, if the current bound is already worse than what we already have uh, at some other sub problems, there is no point uh, you know really going deeper into it, there is no point branching it further. So, that means that particular sub problem is fathomed. And the other part that we do, uh, do LP relaxation, but even that LP is infeasible. See, we are not talking ILP infeasible, just now I said that uh, feasibility, but that feasibility is in the context of ILP. Uh, LP for an ILP problem becomes a quick method to find the bound, but even LP is infeasible that means we just cannot proceed further that means that sub problem is also fathomed. Okay, fine. So, now that we understood here is the same thing whatever I said in the form of a chart right. If we have integer solutions in the first place itself then uh, obviously we stop and whatever is the current bound that itself is the final solution. Otherwise branch and uh, keep doing till all the uh, sub problems are fathomed. Uh, in fact, we shall see later that it is not really necessary to fathom all the sub problems is it ok. Uh, there are situations where even without fathoming all the sub problems we can stop a branch and bound algorithm, but we shall see them as and when we get them. So, now uh, let us take a particular problem. So, uh, supposing I have an ILP problem like this that is maximize z equal to 8 x 1 plus 5 x 2 subject to x 1 plus x 2 less than equal to 6, 9 x 1 plus 5 x 2 less than equal to 45 and x 1 and x 2 they are all greater than 0 and both are integers. So, uh, you know we have to quickly get a bound how by LP relaxation right. So, if the uh, solution of the LP is found what does it mean? The LP solution obviously, if it is also the ILP solution then you know you cannot get any better than that because LP really gives an optimal solution. But uh, if the LP solution is not a feasible ILP solution, then we have to branch further. Please remember as we branch, we are not going to get any solution which is better than the LP solution. Is it all right? If it is so, then obviously the LP uh, there is must be some problem. Is it not? We may not have solved the LP properly. Right. So, optimal solution of the LP problem will provide a bound for the ILP and how do we do uh, branching then? So, let us see that. So, the first stage is to solve the LP part. So, I am not really going into the simplex uh, part of it. You can also solve it by simplex. Uh, I am just giving you uh, the graphical illustration, right? a quick uh, graphically how it looks. But then as you know that if the LP problem is more complex, uh, you cannot solve graphically. Only two or three variable problem you can think of solving graphically. 
for bigger problem you have to go for simplex is it all right and as you go for simplex to solve the lp uh, the solution of the lp uh, then we can examine and we although we cannot draw the graph but we must have an idea about the solution spaces uh, that we are going to have anyway this is a quick example so uh, you know we are uh, have, uh, trying to see in the graph itself so uh, this is that lp part so you know we have uh, these two constant lines one is this first one that is your x1 uh, plus x2 so let us see you know this is the constant line the first constant line which one is x1 plus x2 equal to 6 and this is the second constant line which is 8 x1 plus 5 x2 equal to you know, that is the objective function. So, uh, not this one. So, you know this is the 9 x 1 plus 5 x 2 equal to 45 right and uh, the other one is x 1 plus x 2 equal to 6. So, these are the two constant lines these two constant lines cuts at this point. So, 3.75 2.25 and the if you look at the solution space then the four corner points are, are my candidate solutions uh, basically they are called basic solutions and they are also feasible. So, they are basic feasible solutions. So, optimal solution is one of them incidentally this is 3.75 and 2.25. So, I am not going uh, deep into it that uh, you know I, uh, we can evaluate those four points you know and then see that this point is giving us the best possible value that is the maximum possible value. Anyhow, so uh, this particular point let us call it P. So, P is our optimal solution for LP bound uh, for P0 is it all right. So, you see what is P0? P0 is the LP relaxation of the original ILP problem. So, in the context of ILP uh, is this point uh, is the P0 solution feasible? Look at the solution 3.75 and 2.25 it is not integer right not integers. So, since they are not integers not feasible solution for ILP form an integer linear programming point of view the current point is not feasible. So, what should we do now? We should then uh, you know resort to branching. So, how do I divide this particular problem into two different sub problems which you know really uh, do not lose any of the integer solutions. So, you see all the integer solutions are marked here. So, we, we cannot lose any of those integer solutions, but then uh, you know we can definitely uh, do something which will cut off the current optimal solution because if we have this current optimal solution uh, you know again the same solution will come. Can you understand that supposing we divide these in some way say for example, this particular line. So, supposing I cut the solution space in such a manner that this portion is 1 right this portion is 1 and the remaining portion is another. Supposing I make it SS1 and I make it SS2 does it solve our purpose you see what you get you get that SS2 uh, again the same point will become optimal, but then this is a non integer solution. So, there is really uh, no need to have SS2 in this manner SS1 is fine because uh, that portion is unexplored in that sense whether any of those integers and all those integers are covered by SS1. So, if we take just imagine if we take these two integers on the other part right this portion. So, this small triangular portion if I take and uh, call it SS2 
not this one right and this hatched area if I call as SS2 and this entire portion if I call as SS1 you know uh, it cuts off this current optimal solution which is not feasible from ILP point of view and these SS1 and these SS2 together covers all the integer solutions. So, that mutually exclusive SS1 and SS2 and collectively exhaustive both the things are taken care of. I hope you understood how we have done the branching uh, in such a situation. So, uh, having seen that now let us see the how it looks. So, exactly that is what we have done that the original LP solution is here the LP solution shows 3.75 and 2.25. So, if you calculate 8 times this and 5 times this then this is 41.25 is our current bound that is the maximum possible value uh, that we can achieve uh, about this solution. But then we cannot achieve this it is very clear because you know uh, obviously this is not feasible from ILP point of view. So, as I said these are the two branches P1 and P2 one is x1 greater than equal to 4 the other one is x1 less than equal to 3 is it all right. So, this uh, we call the two subsystems P1 and P2. So, what is P1 then see all that is P0. So, now this is P0 what is this one this is the LP relaxation of the original ILP So, this is the LP relaxation of the original ILP and you know if you add this particular constraint x 1 greater than equal to 4 then you get p 1 right and instead if you add the x 1 less than equal to 3 then you get p 2. So, p 1 is an objective function and three constraints apart from the you know the non negativity constraint. So, uh, now I hope you are clear what is p 1 and what is p 2 right. So, once we understood what is p 1 and what is p 2 now please look exactly what we said that this is p 1 and this is p 2 right. So, yeah. So, this is p 1 and this is p 2 and you know p 1 is here x 1 greater than equal to p 1 and uh, 4 and x 1 less than equal to 3 that side is p 2. So, these are the two subsystems right the p 1 subsystem and p 2 subsystem then what we have to do again we need to find out the integer solutions for them, but you know we have to really uh, find bind uh, bounds of them by finding the LP solutions. Now, look here uh, you know the optimal solution for LP bound then we find that uh, you know the uh, solutions for uh, this one the optimal solution becomes 4 and 1.8 the not this one. So, you know the optimal solution for LP bound for P 1 is this point and optimal solution of this is this point, but this point is not the integer point this point is 4 and 1.8 that is the optimal solution for P 2. How did we get it obviously by you know really seeing all the corner points evaluating and all those things which I am not repeating again and this is the optimal solution for the problem P 1 right. So, these two solutions then we write and we see them in our you know uh, the branch diagram the tree diagram. So, in the tree diagram we see that for the P 1 the optimal solution is you know x 1 equal to 4 and x 2 equal to 1.8 and P 1 is 41 whereas, for P 2 
yeah it is actually x 1 equal to 3 and x 2 equal to 3 uh, that becomes our optimal solution. So, you know uh, once we have it then uh, we have the uh, you know uh, the out of the two if I see which one it is a maximization problem. So, which bound is higher the bound for p 1 is higher. So, obviously, one thing that we should see uh, that is our look here the solution space uh, that we have here yeah, that is. So, uh, that is what we have and uh, let us see the solution space once again. So, uh, once we have this uh, two problems then we find actually that uh, you know this is that let us do a clarification. So, this point is not 4 and 1.8 uh, really the this point is 4 and 1.8 and this problem point is this 3 3. So, now uh, hopefully it is clear that the optimal solution for P 1 is this point that is 4 and 1.8 and optimal solution for P 2 is this point which is 3 3 right. So, once we see that hopefully now we are clear that what are the two solution space for P 1 and P 2 right. So, having said that let us now uh, once again see that what we have got. So, what we have got is that for P 1 4 and 1.8 and for P 2 3 and 3 and these are our bounds for P 1 the bound is 41 and uh, for P 2 the bound is 39. Now, since 41 is higher so you know out of P 1 and P 2 which one should we uh, branch further obviously P 1 because this is an infeasible solution supposing P 2 would have been higher then we could have stopped you know why because look here we have two bounds we have found an integer solution here in P 2 which is incidentally 3 3 and that solution is also the best possible bound that we can have. But that has not happened we find 41 has higher. So, we have to again divide them further. So, how do we divide them let us see that in our next slide. So, if, if you if you look at the diagram. So, look here now what we do that this portion is P 4. So, what is P 4 see this was our uh, you know the SS 1. So, please look at this carefully. So, this is our P 1. So, this portion was our P 1. So, which one was our P 1 this is our P 1. Now, this P 1 has got two integer solution one is this another is this. So, obviously, you can take P 4 and the other part that is your uh, the previous part that is your uh, x 2 greater than equal to 2 and x 2 less than equal to 1. But that x 2 less than equal to 1 uh, that point really cannot be found. Why it cannot be found? Because when you uh, try to do that you know uh, you really find that this P 3 part cannot be you know this x 2 greater than equal to 2 part and x 1 greater than equal to 4 no optimal solution could be found there is no feasible solution space. Whereas, there is a feasible solution space for P 4 and therefore, we again find the optimal solution for P 4 and we find that point is 4.44 and x 2 equal to 1 and P 3 is not feasible. So, when you put this again then you find that this portion is 4.44 and 1. So, again we make further subsystems that is x 1 greater than equal to 5 and x 1 less than equal to 4. How to do that? When you do it then the branching on x 1 or p 4 creates two sub problems that is p 5 and p 6. So, I am not elaborating further let us say the solutions that we have got out of all these different branching and uh, bounding procedure. So, this is our final tree uh, 
in that tree you find that was our original value that was p0 and we find in uh, p0 you know the zlp was 41.25 and this was 3.75 and 2.25 when we have branched this way by keeping all the integer solutions intact i find 41 as a bound and here 39 41 came out to be higher when you further break them then you find that we have an infeasible solutions in p3 but there is a feasible solution in p4 where again we found 40.56 so again when you compare just compare this value 39 40.56 and infeasible so this need not be uh, see further it has bottomed out or fathomed so 40.56 is higher so we have to branch it so again when we branch we find uh, an integer solution here and an integer solution here. So, finally, compare this 3 and tell me which one is the best. All of them are integer solutions. So, the solutions are feasible and out of them it is the ZLP, you know that is 40 that was x1 equal to 5 and x2 equal to 0 that gives the best possible solution. So, this is going to be our optimal solution x1 equal to 5 and x2 equal to 0 is it all right. So, this is how we solve a branch and bound problem is it all right. So, now let us talk about another problem you know let us see how we uh, solve let us say an assignment problem through the branch and bound algorithm. So, here is our assignment problem where we need to minimize total cost of assignment of 4 jobs uh, to 4 machines and this is our cost matrix. So, what we need to do we have 4 jobs and we have 4 machines. So, what are these? These are the costs of assignment. How can we use the branch and bound algorithm? to solve this particular problem. Uh, usually assignment problem has got a very uh, you know well known method called the Hungarian method and uh, we need not really solve uh, assignment problem by the branch and bound algorithm it is not really required. But this is here an example of how you can really do that. So, we must have a quick method of finding the bounds. See, this is a minimization problem. Now, if I really see column wise, now look here, the column wise, the lowest here is 11, lowest here is 8, lowest here is 8, lowest here is 21. So, if you add them up, you know, we get 48. So, can you really have a solution which is lower than 48? Answer is no. So, therefore, you know this is definitely a bound the, that means you cannot have a solution uh, better than this and however, from a uh, point of view of assignment problem you know this is infeasible. So, how do I branch it further is it all right. So, we will discuss that in our next lecture.